Hello everyone and welcome back to Biology with Mrs. Evans. Today we are starting Unit 10, which is all about evolution and the theories that uh, came about during this time period. So first let me begin. Evolution is not the idea that we came from monkeys. Uh, I remember being in biology class and it being debated as to whether or not teachers should teach this uh, because it was against a lot of people's religious beliefs. Again, this is not the idea that we uh, came from monkeys. It is basically the idea that uh, organisms change over time uh, basically in response to environmental factors. So let's look at it. So... Charles Darwin is the scientist that developed the theory of evolution. He used a lot of the uh, ideas of a lot of scientists and he incorporated their ideas into the development of his theory of evolution. So one of the main tenets of his idea was that we all come from a common ancestor. And as you can see here on the screen, this would be basically uh, the common ancestor that all of these organisms would have shared. So evolution, again, the idea that populations change over time uh, in response to basically changes in their environment. Um, notice that all of the organisms here are related to one another. This is what we would call basically a phylogenetic tree, and you can see basically how the different species uh, were created, where they basically branched off and created uh, new species. And again, this is all on the idea that we came from a common ancestor. So the common ancestor would be uh, down here probably on this uh, phylogenetic tree. So evolution is, again, the idea that organisms change over time. And again, it's based on the fact that uh, organisms have uh, different traits in a population. So uh, nature basically chooses those traits that are better suited for, an, uh, for an, an environment, and that is called natural selection. So natural selection is basically the force uh, behind evolution. Uh, there are differences in populations, and nature is going to choose those traits that an individual has that are better suited for a given environment. So again, natural selection is the theory that explains how evolution occurs. There are differences in uh, a population and nature is going to choose those traits uh, that are better suited for a given environment. So I advanced the slide to this. Um, let's, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Let's say that we have uh, two different uh, bunnies in this population. Let's say that in this population we had a bunny that had very long ears and then we had a, a characteristic of a bunny that had very short ears. And these bunnies um, basically were relatives of each other. They lived in this area and uh, part of the island was really hot, part of the island was really cold, but they were able to migrate uh, to wherever they needed to based on temperatures in the in environment. Uh, unfortunately, there was a huge storm uh, that was create um, that happened in history, and the storm was so bad that it caused basically the island to be split in part and into two, and there was a river, a very huge river that separated the two uh, bunny populations. So what happens is is that I'm gonna draw it here. Here's my river. Here's my new uh, island. So what happens is this island here is um, up north and uh, it gets very uh, cold in this part of uh, the new island. And what happens is that because it's so cold, uh, this new island is going to favor bunnies that have very short ears. And that is because if you look at organisms that live in the very cold environments, they have very short appendages, very short ears, very short uh, legs. And the reason why that is, is it helps them maintain body temperature by minimizing these appendages, it minimizes heat loss. So they're able to live in colder environments. So as before, the bunnies could migrate, now they're trapped, all right? So the bunnies that had the very long ears, they can't get to where it's warm, so this area is going to favor 
the long-eared bunny, I'm sorry, the short-eared bunnies and not favor the long-eared bunny. So what happens is now these long-eared bunnies are going to die out and eventually all you're going to see is short-eared bunnies in this island. The opposite would be true for the ones that are in this island. So now this island, because it's uh, further south, is typically hot. So uh, this island is going to favor bunnies that have much larger ears because that allows for uh, heat loss. So they're able to maintain a more stable temperature than the short-eared bunnies because remember, short ears are to maintain basically body heat so they're not able to lose the heat that they need so this island is going to basically favor these so what happens is is that the short ear bunnies that are now trapped can now uh cannot move they're going to die out so eventually all you're going to have is very long eared bunnies in this island and very short ear bunnies in this so nature is choosing those traits uh, for that specific area so that is basically how natural selection works. Nature chooses the traits uh, that are better suited for a given environment. So Charles Darwin, again, he is the scientist that came up with uh, the theory of evolution. He was a um, scientist that basically went around and studied the different organisms that he found. He did a uh, basically a world trip around the world um, studying key areas around the world, and I'll talk about that in a minute. He was on the ship, the HMS Beagle, and he wrote his book uh, on the origin of species that highlighted his theory of evolution. So he did most of his studies um, in a small island that you see here, uh, the Galapagos Islands, and he studied the, the tortoises that were there, um, the lizards that were there, and also uh, most people... Uh, just know about the finches that he studied. So he spent time traveling uh, certain areas in the world, and most of it, again, he spent uh, time studying the Galapagos Islands and the uh, unique tortoises that he saw there and uh, the finches he saw there. So what he noticed was is that you have all these different versions of finches, but they also had traits that looked similar to birds that he had observed uh, in the South American continent. So what he basically um, hypothesized was that the uh, birds from the South American continent basically went over to the Galapagos Islands uh, where they didn't have any uh, competition or predators and they basically established uh, a home there and they basically uh, branched out and created these different uh, species that you see and they created this uh, different or created these different species because they had the variances in the population where they were better suited to carry out a specific job on the island for example uh, again these are more uh, picture representations of the birds that he saw on the Galapagos Islands notice that this bird has a very um, thick broad beak so this bird would be better suited for eating seeds because it has the ability to basically break them open and get the seeds whereas this bird would be better suited for picking out uh, the insects that are in the bark of a tree for example so by having these variations in the finches they all had basically a different food source so they were able to uh, basically branch out and create these different species. This process is what we refer to as adaptive radiation. They all had a different uh, role that they played in the environment so we, we started to see uh, these differences in the birds. So again this is a better picture representation of what these different birds were, eat, were eating. So these guys, like I said, the thicker, broad beaks would be your seed, each, uh, seed eaters because they are able to break the seeds. And then these guys that have the thinner beak or probing uh, bills are better at eating insects. And then these guys over here are going to be um, your fruit eaters. So by having these differences, uh, we... Uh, ended up with lots of variation in the bird species and we refer to that basically that process as adaptive radiation. So in 
earth science, you should have learned that scientists believe that the earth is 4.6 billion years old. So during Darwin's time, um, there was a big shift in how old scientists believe the earth was. In his time, scientists thought that the earth was relatively young, that it was probably only a couple thousand years old. <clears throat> and there were two scientists that basically uh, disputed that belief. They thought that the Earth was millions of years old, and those two scientists are Lyle and Hutton. And Darwin studied their work, and he said, hey, if the Earth is older than we had anticipated, and if the Earth can change through plate tectonics and things like that, then it would stand to reason that organisms as well can change over time. So he used their ideas to help shape his idea on uh, evolution. So in earth science you learned how the earth formed and how uh, the universe formed and that early atmosphere um, of the earth and if you notice the early, the early part of the atmosphere was not very conducive um, to life on earth. If you notice uh, the descriptions of what the earth was like you do not see oxygen there. So how did oxygen come to be? So, Uri and Miller, two scientists that basically um, conducted an experiment to show how life uh, could evolve on this early part of uh, the Earth. So, what they did was is they took um, all of what we knew uh, the Earth's atmosphere to be. They had that in a uh, setup that you see here, uh, what the Earth's oceans look like, etc. And then they created a lightning spark. All right, you can see that they're introducing an electricity because what they believed was is that there was um, a storm that created the building blocks um, necessary for life. And they created this setup, they tested their theory, they exposed the uh, early environment. Uh, what would have been Earth's early environment. And what they notice is that the um, materials that collected here did have um, basically the building blocks that were necessary for life. They produced things that uh, were like amino acids and carbohydrates and things like that. So based on uh, storms and things like that, uh, the Earth's atmosphere could have changed. So we know that the first organism to evolve was a bacteria that was able to do uh, photosynthesis. So they changed basically the Earth's uh, atmosphere as well. By doing photosynthesis, you re uh, reduce the number or the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and then increase the number of um, oxygen that was present. So by having bacteria that could do photosynthesis, their Earth's atmosphere uh, changed again. So we already talked about the theory of endosymbiosis when we talked about the differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Remember, the theory of endosymbiosis is the idea that a very large bacteria cell ate a very small bacteria cell. And the, the small bacteria cell that was ingested by the larger one provided a benefit to the larger bacteria so it didn't destroy it. It basically allowed it to uh, stay inside and, and provide a benefit to it. So this is the idea of how uh, eukaryotic cells evolved from prokaryotic cells. So again, the earliest fossil record uh, as it is right now is 3.7 billion years ago. They found, uh, I think it was last year, last February, uh, bacteria in Iceland, I think it was, that showed that, again, it was bacteria that was able to do uh, photosynthesis. So endosymbiosis, this is a picture representation of stuff that I've talked about in the past. You can see a much smaller bacteria cell. Here is the uh, larger cell doing basically endocytosis. It was a benefit for the cell, so it replicated and created uh, these eukaryotic cells. The idea of how uh, eukaryotic cells came to be is the endosymbiosis theory. So again, uh, Darwin looked at the ideas of lots of scientists to help shape his idea of uh, evolution. He looked at um, 
Lyle and Hutton's ideas on how the earth was shaped. He also looked at Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck was a scientist that believed in basically the idea that uh, organisms acquired characteristics. Um, his idea was referred to as the theory of use and disuse uh, or the theory of acquired characteristics. So what he believed was is that uh, an organism could develop a trait and then pass that trait on to an organism. For example, let's say um, a giraffe, and I'll advance it. So going back to this, um, you, you know, you've heard the saying, use or lose it. So a blacksmith uh, develops very strong arms on his right side because he's right-handed. Uh, then when he goes to have an offspring, his offspring would have a very strong right arm because he developed basically those traits um, in his lifetime, and he would then pass those on to his offspring. Uh, obviously, that doesn't make sense in what we know about today. Um, if that was the case with uh, Doberman pinchers and the other guard dogs when we go to crop their ears or crop their tail then the next generation because they had lost basically those traits uh, when that that next generation is born they would come out with their ears cropped and their tails docked and that's simply not what happened that's simply not what happens so Lamarck he had this idea um, that a lot of people basically um, rejected but Darwin said, hey, there is some merit to it. Um, organisms do change over time. He just didn't have basically the mechanism correct as to how uh, they changed. So Darwin took the ideas of Lamarck, Hutton, Lyle, and another scientist, uh, Mathis. Mathis is a scientist that studied basically populations. And uh, Mathis said that, hey, as populations get bigger, then they start to fight for resources. And uh, Darwin incorporated his ideas into his development of uh, his theory of evolution. So in the next video, we're going to go a little bit more in detail about uh, Darwin's idea of theory, uh, the theory of evolution and, and what evidence he used to support his idea. So this is the beginnings of how evolution came to be. Um, you'll get a worksheet that it goes into a little bit more detail about the different scientists and how uh, they played a role in shaping his idea of evolution. So that's it. Have a great day. See you in class. Bye. All right, so Lamarck's idea was is that uh, giraffes got very long necks because this organism basically stretched their necks to get the um, food. And because they stretched their necks, the next generation would have basically that longer neck. This generation would keep stretching to acquire more and more food. So over time, giraffes ended up with these much larger necks. And he also believed that, again, if you didn't use the trait because it didn't benefit you, then eventually it would uh, no longer be present um, in the species. That's, that was the idea of use, use and disuse.